morning, everyone. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> Happy Tuesday. Tuesday with a T-W-O. <laughs> Welcome to a holiday special live crochet along. I hope you guys can hear us. Um, you know what it is. It's uh, some trolls, it's some squirrels, it's a combination thereof. We did feed the squirrels, I swear. So not quite sure what happened there, but it looks like you can hear us. So that's great. Let's go. Um, we did some crochet thread Christmas card tuck-ins yesterday. These are little gifts that tuck into a Christmas card. So that's the card. These are how small they are. They're nice and thin. They tuck in. Uh, and we made them using patterns for existing appliques that we have, our little granny tree, our little snowflake, and our little granny star. And we thought for today we would pull the family. We said, let's do something snowman related. So we had three options and a tuck-in for a snowman one. So we are going to make a little tuck-in, so similar thing out of thread, using our snowman applique tutorial. So we do have a tutorial. We'll link that in the description box down below if it's not already there. We'll include it, um, making sure that it's there by the end of the show. And we also have a pattern for that. So if you're comfortable reading written patterns, we have that in our shop. That's today's sneaky little sale. And we are going to make it using thread. So I jumped back into my thread bin. I have quite a big thread bin. And I've pulled out mostly size three crochet thread. So I made this snowflake, just for, for reference, I made this snowflake using the crochet thread size three yesterday and my B hook, that is a 2.25 millimeter. I really like that ratio of hook size to crochet thread. So since the majority of the yarn or the thread I'm using is a size three, I'm gonna stick with that hook today. But if you're gonna size down even more and go with like a 10 weight um, crochet thread, something really, really thin, then I recommend one of the steel hooks. Yesterday I used um, a 1.75 millimeter steel hook with this. This is a size 10 thread and I really like that stitch to hook ratio as well. So that's my um, recommendation if you wanna go even smaller. But I'm going with the size three. Now this is about equivalent to a size one sock weight yarn. So if you have sock weight yarn you wanna use instead, then the same hook, the B hook, 2.25 millimeter will work. So I've got some white. I have a lot more white. I'm just, I'm gonna try and use up my, my little spools here. White for my snowman. I've got a little bit of black for his hat. Um, and I haven't quite decided on a scarf. I might go with this pink. I might go with this green. I'm not sure. And I've also got some orange embroidery floss, which is relatively similar in size uh, to the thread that I'm using. If I can just pick up a little piece. So it's about the same thickness as my size one thread. I just need a small amount for his nose. Uh, pair of scissors. I've got a measuring tape just in case. I just like to give it a good measure at the end to sort of see how tall it works out to. And I'm going to need a needle that I can thread my crochet thread into. So I don't have my typical wool needle today. I'm just going to use one of my smaller needles and uh, I will use that for weaving in my tails and doing a little bit of sewing and embroidery. So this is a slightly more complicated applique as Mr. and Stitches is showing you. It uh, does have a little bit of sewing, not a lot. And uh, we're gonna do some French knot work. So these are gonna be really, really cute. If you don't want to use French knots, you can always add beads. I might consider beads. I might give him little beads today. I've got tons of little black beads. Um, but if you're going to be putting this in a Christmas card or a greeting card or just putting it in an envelope, you don't want beads that are too bulbous because you don't want them to compress into the card. You don't want to sort of have them popping through the card or just denting the card. So keep that in mind if you're going to use beads. Sequins are a nice choice or alternative as well, or really flat little buttons. So there we go. Hmm. Thank you, Marie. And Marie has just reminded me, I would like to send a great big thank you to Nico for gifting a membership in our last miniature stream. <laughs> a giant thank you to Lynette for the super chat. Thank you so much, Lynette. And to Donna, who also picked up a pattern in our shop. So Marie, Donna, thank you both. Thank you, Nico, and thank you, Lynette. All right, my dears, let's get started here. I'm gonna put some stuff to the side just so we have a little bit of space. I guess these guys can stay up here. They're not really in the way. And I'm gonna start with my white We also thread. had a new member join us um, just a second ago. Oh my gosh. Big thank you to Victoria, who Victoria. has joined our Merino membership. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome, Victoria. Welcome to the family. 
do you want to build a snowman? I've had that running through my head all day. <laughs> Let's build a snowman. Woohoo. Okay, so we are going to start with the head. The head and the body are made pretty much the same. The body's just one row larger than the head. We want nice, tiny little um, circle centers. So we're going to start with a slip um, circle or a cinch circle. There are so many names for this thing, the magic circle. You want to create a little, little cross, cross your yarn into a circle, take your hook, pass it through the circle, grab the yarn, pull it back, so you've got a little loop on your hook and then just chain one. And that chain one just establishes your circle and now it's not gonna come apart or fall off your hook. We're gonna chain two more. So we're starting with a chain three. That chain three counts as a double crochet for now, but then it's not gonna count <laughs> once we get back around to it. So we use the chain three to get up to the right height, but ultimately we'll not be treating it as a stitch. So we're gonna work 12 double crochet stitches into this cinch circle. If you're new to working with thread or sock weight yarn, take your time, take it easy. Working with small hooks and small yarn can take a little bit of getting used to. I find my biggest issue with working with thread is just having something to hold on to when I'm starting. All right, so far that's six double crochet. We have a few, um, I'm not gonna say new, but uh, reinserted emojis. If our uh, members wanna dig through and find the uh, new ones, <laughs> we'll have a little mini competition. Krista found the newest. <laughs> well done, Summer, Nico, okay, Caroline, <laughs> yes, Caroline got them all. <laughs> Those are all our most recent. So we have the snowman, we have the Christmas tree, and we have the little Jade and Stitches binder kit journal. Yes, because- And the fireplace, that's right. And the fireplace. The fire pit, that's a new one too. Our um, snowman, obviously, because we're doing the snowman. <laughs> um, our well binder done, kit. everybody. Our um, 2024 calendar is now available in our Etsy shop. So for those of you who like to keep track of days, we've got a calendar. <laughs> and um, that is in the shop up top. So if you land in the Etsy shop, you'll see it up top. I know a lot of you were asking, so we're making a point to mention it this week. All right, I've got 12 double crochets worked into my cinch circle. Take a second to count them up. And remember, we're not actually counting the chain three as a double crochet. So make sure you've got 12 on top of that chain three. Sipping my water here. Once you're sure you have 12, take your short tail, cinch it up nice and tight so that you have zero center. And then you're gonna find the chain three, skip it, and join with a slip stitch to the top of the first real double crochet. So I'm just gonna work over top of my short tail and we've got a perfect round little circle. Now the point of skipping the chain one or the chain three and joining with the uh, to the top of the first double crochet is that it just gives you a really solid center, a really nice round circle, and there's no gaps in it. So we're gonna do the same thing for the next row. We're gonna chain three. Ultimately though, we won't be using it or treating it like a double crochet, but it does get us up to the right height. We're gonna double crochet into the same place that we just chained three out of or the same place that you joined in. And now into each of these little stitches all the way around, there'll be 11 more of them, you're gonna work two double crochet into each stitch. So we're going for a stitch count of 24. So two double crochet in each stitch all the way around. Um, Sarah is asking for a link to the calendar. Um, I can put you, I can put a link to the Etsy shop and then it should be up top. Yeah, it's right up top. Right up top. 
Uncle Steve. Good morning, Uncle Steve. Uncle Steve's been a member for 35 months with a membership milestone. Thank you. Good morning to you, too. It is an absolutely perfect day to build a snowman. We've got a lot of fresh, wet, heavy snow out there, so uh, I could definitely build a snowman, but I don't think he'd stick around very long because I think it's going to warm up again. I'm steadily working my way around here, two double crochet in each stitch, just taking my time, no need to rush, making sure that I don't miss any stitches. Hello, Billy Joe. Welcome to Alpaca. Thank you for the re-welcome. Once you get all the way back to the beginning, you've got one little stitch left. It's this little guy right here. It sits right at the base of the chain three. It's what we call the false stitch because we get it when we join our rows with a slip stitch when we're working in the round. So you've worked two double crochet into each of those 11 stitches and a double crochet into the same place that you chained out of. So we're going to double crochet once into that false stitch that sits right at the base of the chain three. And then we're going to skip the chain three and join with a slip stitch to the top of the first real double crochet. So that's it. Two rows. That is our little head. So 12 double crochet, not including the chain three in the first row. 24 double crochet, not including the chain three in the second row. But to be perfectly honest, if you're a stitch off here or there, it doesn't matter because we're just going for a perfect little circle. So don't worry too much about stitch count. And now you're going to leave a little bit of a tail for sewing. So maybe, I don't know, I like to give it sort of a generous length. What have I got here? About 35 centimeters, maybe a little over a foot. Just enough to do a little bit of sewing, but not too little that I will run out. So that's my little head. I'm going to leave him to the side. And now we're going to do basically the same thing. We are going to create another circle, but just one row larger than our head, and that will be the body. So two circles. And here we go. It starts out exactly the same way as the head. We make a cinch circle. Chain three, the chain three does not count as a double crochet, but it does get us up to the right height. Nico, <laughs> thank you, Nico. Nico has gifted another membership and it looks like Beans has won it. Congratulations, Beans. <laughs> so we are gonna work besides the chain three, which doesn't count, we're gonna put 12 double crochets into this cinch circle. So it operates exactly the same way as the head. So it starts out the same way. The first two rows are exactly the same. 12 double crochet into our cinch circle. I'm going to just untwist my little thread. So 11, one more, double check. So I'm not counting my chain three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So 12, double crochet into your cinch circle, just like the head, cinch it up nice and tight. You're gonna skip the chain three and slip stitch into the top of the first double crochet you made to join. So 12 double crochet, a perfect circle, we're going to chain three and double crochet in the same place. And then we're going to work two double crochet in each of the next 11 stitches all the way around, which will bring us back up to the foot of the chain three and that little false stitch, which we will use again. So we're making the body exactly the same way. The first two rows are exactly the same way as the head is built. Hello, Wendy. Wendy's been a member for 22 months. Thank you, Wendy. Wendy with a membership milestone says, thank you for all the amazing tutorials. I love you guys. Well, thank you. 
And thank you so much for being here. This has been a lot of fun. We're kind of hoping that this, uh, these little live streams, if, if, if nothing else, <laughs> give you some inspiration, maybe give you a little bit of company and give you permission to sit down and get some work done. You know, like those crochet gifts that we all tell ourselves we're going to make and then often don't quite get around to. So uh, if you can carve out an hour to kind of hang out, do a little crochet, then you've got an hour to get a little bit of work done. So that's how I see it. Working two double crochet into each of these stitches all the way around. Hello, Louise. Louise has been a member for 60 months. My goodness. Thank you, Louise. Louise with a membership milestone. Glad to see you here. So we're going for 24 stitches all the way around in row two, just like we did with the head. And I'm just taking my time, working nice and small. Membership milestone from Mandy's Doll Couture. Hello, Mandy. Oh, this is a busy time of year for Mandy, too. Mandy's been a member for 29 months. Thank you, Mandy. Mandy says, I've missed y'all. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Mandy. Mandy's probably spinning like a top, <laughs> getting doll clothing orders finished. So that's two double crochet in each stitch all the way around. That brings us back to the false stitch. We're going to work one double crochet into that, skip the chain three, and join with a slip stitch to the top of the first real double crochet. We're all talking about how cute a little sheep applique would be. I don't think we have a sheep. We don't, and that must be rectified. <laughs> yes. I mean, whoa. Oversight. Talk about an oversight. Oh my gosh. All right, that is row two of the body complete. We have one more row to go. We are going to chain three right where we are, double crochet into the same place. Double crochet once into the next stitch. And now we're going to do a little increase repeater pattern all the way around. Two double crochet into the next stitch. one double crochet into the stitch after that and you're going to repeat that two one two one two one ten more times and that will bring us all the way back to that false stitch at the base of the chain three which we will treat the same way we have the previous two rows and we are going to be up to 36 stitches at the end of row three. Oh my goodness joyce thank you so much joyce feel like I'm sitting in Santa's workshop looking out the window at all this snow. <laughs> I like these little um, cardboard spools that the thread comes on. They're nice and hard. I usually keep them back for other crafting projects. The only thing I don't like is the way the thread comes off and it wants to twist and I have to keep pausing and sort of sort of unspooling the uh, the thread because it, it sort of wants to uh, tangle up and twist just because of the way it comes off the spool. Minor complaint, but <laughs> I do feel it slows me down a little bit. But you know what? Then again, maybe it's just good to stop every so often anyway. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wendy, thank you so much, Wendy. Two, one, two, one. Uh, we woke up to snow this morning. I'd say, what would you say, Mr. and Stitches, about an inch or two? A um, couple of inches of wet, heavy, wet snow. Yeah, heavy, wet snow. Mm -hmm. Very pretty. Very pretty. Not so fun to shovel. Not so pretty to, you know, shovel. But <laughs> looking at it, out at it, it's very pretty. So 
I've got one more little repeat to go here. Two double crochet into the next stitch. One double crochet into the stitch after that. That completes the repeating pattern and it brings me up to the false stitch at the base of the chain three. I'm going to work a double crochet into that stitch, skip the chain three, and join with a slip stitch to the top of that first real double crochet. I can fasten off. I don't need any sewing tails on the body and I can take a moment to weave in that tail. So I'm going to snip my thread, fasten off. I'm going to pull out one of my larger eyed needles so I can sort of thread up my, that might work. So that's what I'll do. We have a membership milestone from Michelle. Hello, Michelle. And we got a super chat from Anna Kate. Well, hello, hello, hello. I'd like to thank Michelle, member for 46 months. Thank you so much, Michelle. Says, good morning, everyone. I'm working on a wedding blanket for a dear friend's son and his bride. I love seeing my crochet family as I work. That is so sweet. Oh my gosh. What a wonderful thing. <laughs> That's such a lovely thing to be working on. And a big hello to Anna Kate. Thank you so much for the super chat. Anna says, I am currently panic stitching my way through some Christmas scarves that I probably should have started a month ago. Oh, you and me both, my dear. Nice to hear your friendly voice while I question all my life choices. <laughs> you are not alone. <laughs> We are all questioning our life choices. Yes, I think that's kind of like a daily routine. I think that's, uh, I think that's a human thing. It is a human thing, very much so. I wonder if the squirrels question their life choices. I'm hmm. probably. They get up and forget that they live in a tree and fall out the front door. <laughs> um, I don't panic. <laughs> I, I think that in order to, to crochet a little quicker, I mean, obviously it's it's nice to have some company, but um, later on, if you're trying to sort of speed up, then uh, putting on some, some jaunty music will help speed you along. I find that helps speed me up if I'm listening to some good music. Hopefully it's a pattern you don't have to focus too much on. All right, I'm just weaving in that little bit of tail. So there's my little bottom. Here's my little top. And I can adjust how much overlap I want with my snowman head and body, which is great because I will be making him a scarf and I'm not quite sure how thick my scarf's going to turn out yet because I'm not sure if I'm going to use the size 3 crochet thread or the size 10 crochet thread. Uh, but we will get to that. First, we are going to make a hat. So let me put my little needle back. It doesn't get lost on me. So let's put this little guy over here. Take a sip of coffee. Okay, so. Cherry B. Hello, Cherry. Cherry B has arrived. Cherry with a membership milestone. <clears throat> Hi, Cherry. Cherry's been a member for 42 months. Thank you, Cherry. Cherry says, good morning, Ms. J and General G. Love your parties. Well, thank you so much. Nothing quite, nothing says party like some hooks and some thread, man. <laughs> All right, I am unraveling nothing says my- says party like wool, soft wool yarn. Yeah, nothing says party like getting cozy. <laughs> of course, the older you get, that's pretty accurate. <laughs> nothing says party like a lounge chair. Yes, like lounging. All right, I'm breaking out my black crochet thread. This is also size three. I'm going to be saying what I do as I go just because I know it won't be super easy to see. But in the video tutorial we've got, it's a little clear, even though I'm also using black yarn there. This is very simple. It's basically just some single crochet, so it doesn't really require a great sort of uh, super amount of focus. We're going to leave a little bit of tail though before we start our slip knot. So I've got about, oh, I don't know, 20 centimeters or so, about 10 inches. And I'm going to start my slip knot further up because this is going to be my little sewing yarn or my sewing thread. That's what's left behind. I'm going to chain nine. So 
So I've got nine chains here. Always skip the first chain from the hook. We're going to be using the single crochet stitch. You're going to single crochet in the second chain and single crochet in each chain back. And that's eight single crochet. I'm just grabbing the top loop of each of those chains in my foundation chain row just because that's my habit, but it doesn't really matter. At the end, that gives me eight single crochet, so that's the end of row one. I'm just going to unfurl that. This is the little brim of his top hat. We're going to chain one and turn. We are going to slip stitch into the first stitch. So skip your chaining, your turning chain, slip stitch into that first stitch like it's not even there. So just slip stitch into it. And then slip stitch into the second stitch. Now, without moving away from the stitch, we're going to chain one and single crochet in the same place. So if I pull up, you should be able to sort of see that little space there. So slip stitch, chain one, single crochet all into that second stitch. Single crochet into each of the next five stitches. And you're going to leave the last stitch on that row unworked. So you've got one stitch out the end you're not touching and one stitch out this end that you slip stitched past. So you're just creating kind of the little brim to stick out. And you've got six single crochets now across the very middle of your little hat piece. So eight in row one, six in row two. And then we're going to chain one turn. And for the next four rows, well, five rows, rows three, four, five, and six. Uh, three, three rows, four rows, three, four, five, and six, yeah. <laughs> four complete rows. We are going to chain one turn and single crochet across each of those six stitches just to make his hat nice and tall. So if you want a slightly taller hat, you can work a couple more rows. And if you want a hat the same size as mine, just six rows will do in total. Hello, Summer. Summer's in the house. Summer's been a member for 55 months. Thank you so much, Summer. Summer says, I'm trying to make presents out of my stash. Excellent idea. I don't know if I have enough for these giant plushies. <laughs> just maybe. I really should have started before the fifth. I'll send you inspo pics later. I love it. Please do. <laughs> I love how... We're all starting late, even though we're like, oh, I've got the best of intentions. I'm not starting late this year and late start. <laughs> Hi, Pamela. Pamela with a membership milestone. Pamela's been a member for three months. Thank you, Pamela. Pamela says, thanks for all the great patterns and gift ideas. Keeps me busy. Oh, I love it. Excellent. Happy to keep everybody busy. I'm happy to be busy. And it's just so nice to have the company and I'm so busy crocheting, I gotta stop and count how many rows I'm in. So there's row one, two, three, four, five, one more row to go. Chain one turn. This will be the final row of this little black hat using crochet thread. All right, so very, very simple. Row one is just eight stitches long. And rows two through six are six stitches long. So we get this, I'll lay it down so you can see it. We get a little two-dimensional top hat effect. You can snip your thread, fasten off, weave in that short tail up top, but leave the long tail on the bottom for joining because you're going to use it to sew the top hat to the top of your snowman once you have your snowman stitched together. But we're going to do that in a little bit. So now I'm just going to weave in that little tail. Big thank you to Anna Kate for renewing channel membership. Hello, Anna Kate. Thank you. Welcome back to Silk. Anna's busy in the chat today. All right. So in one side. And we're 
going to go back the way we came. don't think I need any more so I can trim what's left there careful not to actually get my so there's my little top hat done I can lay him down there we go so one little top hat how cute and that will eventually sit on his head in a jaunty sort of way now what's next let's make his nose his nose is a very tiny little thing. So I'm just going to put him to the side. There's his little hat. Again, put the needle away. The nose is very small. Now, you can embroider a nose if you'd rather. You can use um, a couple of beads or something if you want. But this is the actual miniature crochet pattern for the nose. I'm going to be using embroidery floss because it's roughly the same thickness as my thread that I'm using. I'm going to start with a tiny little slip knot on my hook. I'm going to chain three so there's a small chain of three with my orange. I'm going to skip the first chain from the hook and I'm going to slip stitch into the second chain. And single crochet into the last chain. It makes the tiniest of little triangles, and that is going to be our little carrot nose. Nothing too long. Leave a little bit of tail for sewing, so I'm going to leave, eh, shouldn't need too much. And then I'm going to take a moment to weave in that super little short tail that I began with. So this is my sewing thread. And then my little short tail, I'm going to weave it in across the back. Woo, this is so small. Like I said, you can just embroider it if you want, but I just love getting ridiculous. <laughs> if, I, if I'm going to go crochet thread, I'm just going to go all the way. So here we go. I'm just going to weave this little tiny tail in across the back of that nose just a couple times. Careful not to pull my little triangle out of alignment. And it's really not going to want to <clears throat> come off. So once I just weave this back through a couple of loops, I'll just trim whatever's not necessary. There we go. Itty bitty. So I'm going to trim that little bit. And that is my itty bitty little carrot nose. So that'll be right in the center of his face, kind of going off on a little angle. Now, his scarf. Okay, guys, um, I'm going to let you guys choose this one. Shall I make him a woolly pink scarf with this nice kind of loosely wound size one? It's kind of like a crochet thread. It's kind of like, a, it's definitely like a, it's a wool. So it's got a little bit of a fluff to it. It's kind of a nice rose color. Or will I try with the green? The green is a lighter, uh, thinner thread. So I might have to make it a little longer, but I'm not, I'm not against either. So what do you think? Pink, wool, or green cotton for his scarf? And hello, Maria. Maria has been a member for 50 months. Thank you, Maria. Maria with a super membership milestone. Maria says, woohoo, to another live. I am crocheting the dog balloon animal for my three grandchildren. Oh my gosh, that thing is so cute. <laughs> I love that thing. That is so neat. Oh, they're going to love that. What a fun, quirky idea. Oh, goodness. Virginia, thank you so much for picking up some patterns. We've got pink, pink, green, pink, green, pink, green, green, green. Ooh, green, pink, green, green, green. Golly, pink and green. <laughs> pink, pink. Green, pink, green. Gosh, I'm going to say this is right down the middle. You're just trying to get me to do a poll I don't want to do. No, that's why I thought we would just put in I know in your the... tricks. <laughs> I 
time we put it in the chat. I've been here a while. I, I guess we'll have to do a poll. That's like right down the middle. It's right down the middle. I kind of like. Thanks a lot, everyone in the chat. I think we need the lurkers to come out and help see, out. See, that's here. that would be the green. This is the color of the green. Oh my gosh, I might make him hold this tree. That is so cute. Um, that would be the color of the green against his his uh, against him. And then there's this pink, which I really like. It's um, it's wool. I love them both. This one would actually kind of look a bit like a, a scarf because it's got like a bit of a fluffiness to it but then the green would really stand out against his his white snowy body so i'm having trouble with this one um so are you going to try and do a poll i'm going to do a poll okay it'll slow everything down but that's perfectly all right we're not in a rush we are not in a rush everything will get a little bit slower okay well tell you what a little um, bit slow while we're going to do the poll i think i'm going to sneeze not that that needs to be announced but <laughs> i just realized i ooh. Well, hold on let me turn the mic up <laughs> oh, oh my aaron aaron Every thank you so you much sneeze, the the shop makes a sale <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, my goodness. Aaron, thank you for picking up a couple of patterns. <laughs> Jada, you have to dial the cuteness down. We've oh, my already, gosh. I beg your pardon, everyone. We've already talked about this. <laughs> it's we've the already fuck. had this conversation. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to let you guys vote green or pink for his scarf. And in the meantime, um, I'm just going to put this up here so you can sort of see them. I'm going to start stitching this little guy together because the scarf can go on last. So, uh, first things first, let's put his body. Katie goes, achoo ching <laughs> Achoo ka ching Achoo I like that, Katie. That's funny. I like that too. <laughs> um, we're going to put his little, his little head on his body. Um, so I'm going to thread up the tail I left on his head in my needle here. And you just want to overlap just a little bit. You don't even have to do that much. You can make him, you can make it as tall or as short as you want. So um, if you want sort of less neck, then you're just sort of stitching a few stitches here at the bottom of his head. If you want a little bit more, then it's entirely up to you. It doesn't really matter where you put it because you're going to be covering this little overlap with the scarf anyway. So I'm gonna make my snowman. I'm just gonna just barely overlap the two together and I'm just going to sew right back and forth through both pieces, making sure I get through the body and through the head as I go. Making sure I go all the way through. So nothing fancy. And then I will definitely have enough thread left, so I will probably turn around and go all the way back just to make sure that it's <clears throat> in there nice and solid. Doesn't want to come off on me. And I think I can do one more. Let's get that little back one there. Couple more minutes for the poll. Yeah. <clears throat> Calling all lurkers. We need your votes, lurkers. So I'm just gonna stitch all the way back now, kind of going through the stitches. nothing fancy it's all the same color so it's all going to blend in together and then I will be covering this little edge of his neck with the scarf that I make when I'm done I'm just gonna bring it through to the back so not very neat stitching but you can't even tell the whole thing is now one little piece um, I'm going to make a tiny little knot on the back here just the smallest little knot. And then I'm gonna weave my tail in back and forth underneath some of those stitches, just like I would if I was just finishing off my crochet. So, I'm just gonna pull it down. I like to weave it in underneath the actual, like the loopy part of the stitch, the stitch where it connects to the previous row. So I'm just gonna do that here.
And I'm just going to double back under a few stitches. That should be more than enough. I don't think that's going to go anywhere. So I'll trim that. I can go into my... There we go. So there's my little snowman body put together. I'm going to put on his little nose now. So I usually just aim for the very middle of his face. And thread up the same thing. And this is, oops, there we go. You can sort of see like there's row one, the center of his face. And I just kind of angle the wider part of the nose against the very, very center of that cinch circle. And then I just sort of let it fall where it sits. doesn't really matter. And I'm going to. We have uh, 119 votes. Okay. Should call we it. end the poll? Yeah, call it. Give the poor computer a break. We definitely have some glitching going on here. Green, 40%. Pink and green together, 30%. What is this pink and green together business? Pink, 29%. Gee, that was close. All right, green it is. So I'm going to experiment with the green thread. I'm going to use the same size hook. It's going to make for a slightly loopier crochet, I think. We shall see. Green scarf it is. Okay. So I will get to that in a minute. I'm going to finish sewing on my little nose. So all I'm doing, and those of you who've seen me do applique stuff before, you'll know what I'm doing. I'm just grabbing the top loops of the stitches on the front facing stitches of the snowman, just getting my hook under or my needle under it. And then I'm going through the edge of the applique in this case it's the nose and that way it doesn't show through to the back so you see I can stitch it on without actually having any stitching showing through to the back and just making sure his little nose isn't moving too much Nico, thank you Nico, Nico ever so generous has just gifted another membership Thank you so much. And Wraith has won it. Hey, welcome back, Wraith. Not too many stitches to worry about on this little nose. And I'm just making sure that I'm grabbing stitches that are kind of underneath it on the, the face of the snowman. And again, I'm not going through. I'm just stitching it to the surface stitches or the surface loops of that snowman. So nice, neat way to add a little bit of embroidery. So there's his little nose on. And... I You're going to have to keep an eye on the chat because my computer has gone completely wonky here. Ooh, it's that pole. doesn't like the poles. No, that's It struggles bad. with the poles for some reason. All right. Little tiny knot. Little tiny knot. And I'm just going to weave it ever so slightly through my nose and then I'm going to trim what's left. There we go. So that is one little carrot nose stitched on. I can trim that a little bit better. Careful not to get the crochet. There. <clears throat> and I can add his little hat too. We have got a definite snowman character showing up here. I will add his, his eyes and his nose in a moment. I like to get the hat on so that I know that my eyes aren't going to be in the way. And. I'm just going to take the hat, the brim of it, and I'm just going to lay it across just so it overlaps the, the very top sort of side of his head. I like it kind of to be on a little bit of an angle, like he's sort of looking off in one direction. And then just like I did with the bottom, I'm just going to sew all the way across back and forth through this thing, because I think that doesn't look terribly messy at all. some kind of 
Amen. So I'm just doing a running stitch, nothing fancy. I'm going to go all the way across and then I'm going to turn around and go all the way back just so I know it's not going to come off. And I don't feel like that's Now you could, if you wanted to, do the same thing by just doing a little bit of surface surface stitching so that your little stitches didn't show through to the back, but I really don't feel like that's <laughs> terribly messy. And um, we were talking about this during our Folk Art Gingerbread House ornament live stream, and I said you could always put some cardboard on the back just sort of glue a little bit of cardboard onto the back of these things just to make them a little stiffer. And someone else, I'm so sorry I've forgotten your name, um, suggested felt. Felt is an excellent idea too. So you could add felt or a bit of painted cardboard to the back of these things if you wanted to give it a little bit of extra stiffness or if you'd made quite a mess <laughs> doing embroidery or something and you just wanted to cover it up. Um, gives it a little bit of stiffness. It helps keep its flat shape and um, it will uh, neaten up the back too if that's something you're concerned about. I'm not. I'm not too worried about this. I think this looks just fine. So I'm going to make a little knot on the back of the hat and then weave the tail into the hat stitches which will definitely disappear. So I'm going to go all the way out to the edge. So I'm just weaving that tail in across the back of the stitches of the hat and making sure I don't change the shape as I do it. And then I'm going to go back. So kind of back through the same stitches and then if there's anything left over I will just trim it. And I find it's helpful to kind of hang on to these stitches while you do the weaving in, especially when it starts to get nice and tight, because uh, you don't want to pull any of your stitches out of alignment. You don't want to kind of cinch your stitches together or anything like that. There we go. So one little top hat on our little, there we go. One top hat, one little nose. Now we just need to make a scarf. So we're going with the green. I'm going to use the same hook. This is a thinner, this is the size 10 thread that I made my little tree out of yesterday, but I'm using a larger hook today. So we shall have a different looking, not too much, but a slightly different looking scarf. Now the pattern calls for a slip knot and 21 chains. I'm going to just hold this against his neck just to make sure that it's not too short just because I've changed the thickness of my, comparatively speaking, of my thread. So chain 21. So that's 21. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Because all we're going to do is just sort of stitch it along his neckline and let a little bit kind of hang like it's sort of floating in the breeze because um, there's a wind coming behind him. So I think 21 is still just fine, even though I'm using the thinner weight uh, thread. Skip the first chain from the hook. We're going to half double crochet into the second chain. Bitty bitty. And then half double crochet into each chain all the way across. And this will be a thinner scarf, but the length will still be nice. And I still think it'll be enough to cover his neck. I'm thinking that I'm going to, instead of doing little French knots for him, for his eyes and his mouth, the little lumps of coal, his buttons, I think I'm going to actually add button, like uh, beads. I've got some nice black beads that uh, I think would be the perfect size. So I'm going to stitch some beads to him just so I don't have any additional um, 
kind of embroidery showing through to the back. So I think that'll help kind of make it the whole thing look a little neater. So as soon as I get a scarf finished and stitched on, I'm going to grab my black beads and I will stitch on some little lumps of coal. The original pattern um, says you can, you know, of course you can use beads, buttons, whatever you want. We included French knots in the original because it was made with um, a medium weight yarn. So the French knots aren't difficult. Plus, if you don't want to fiddle with beads or buttons or anything, it's a nice way to add some embroidery. Uh, but the original was sort of designed to be an applique, meaning you would be then sort of appliquing the entire thing to another project. So you wouldn't see anything on the back anyhow. Uh, but if this is going to be just a little bookmark or a little card tuck in or something or a little ornament to hang on the tree, then uh, the neater the back, the better. Oh, oh that, coffee of yours. that is so cute. I could use more if you're dishing it up. The chat is back. I was have struggling with the chat. Thank you. Do you want eggnog or no? Oh, I'll cream? have a little eggnog. A little egg, eggnog? eggnog? Yes, please. All right. There's a surcharge. There's a surcharge for, for that. The <laughs> There's a lot of surcharges today. All right. So I'm going to a snip my thread. There's a surcharge for the surcharge. There's a surcharge. Of, what is this, Canada? <laughs> All right. I'm going to leave a long tail for sewing. And I've probably got, oh, I don't know. 60 centimeters, maybe just a little shy of 24 inches of sewing tail. Definitely more than I need, but I'd rather have more than too little. I think that looks really cute. So even though I've used the thinner thread, I think that's a really cute little scarf. Oh gosh. So all I'm gonna do is weave that short tail in underneath the backs of stitches along this first little few stitches here. And let's see if I can do this. I want to get, this might be too wide a needle. Need something smaller. Let's go smaller. There we go. So I'm going to get in those little stitches. This is very small work. It's the same thing that I usually do. I'm just weaving my needle underneath some of those stitches. Is everyone behaving in oh, the chat? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Are all the lurkers behaving? Our community is amazing. I think I think even if we're misbehaving, we're behaving. <laughs> mm. How do you read that tiny oh, little text? Um, very carefully. <laughs> wow. Thank you. So I'm going to get my needle underneath some of those stitches first. Oh, that's small, small work, but it's worth it. All right. There we go. Thread up that tail. I like to do the weaving first and then thread the tail up just so I don't have to keep weaving the tail in and out if it wants to fall out. So that. And then I don't really need to weave it back, but I will. I think I'm just going to go back underneath a couple of stitches. Tiny, tiny stuff. You could also just trim whatever's left. This part of the scarf is going to get stitched down to the snowman. So that little tiny tail isn't really a big deal. Okay. So keep the needle out. I'm going to thread up that tail now and we're going to sew our scarf down. So I like to start the scarf over here on the sort of the side of his head where his, his hat's tucked away too. I'm going to follow the edge of his neck. So it looks like it's kind of dipping underneath the edge of his little chin. And then I leave this little bit sort of to, to flap in the breeze like a real scarf would. And I'm going to sew all the way, uh, all the way along the bottom edge of the scarf to the edge of the snowman and then hop over and sew back across the top edge, pausing every so often just to make sure that I'm kind of covering up that chin. And I'm going to be using the top facing loops of the snowman so that I don't end up stitching all the way through. There we go. So that's the first two stitches. And then I'm just going to kind of keep pausing and making sure that I haven't moved it too much. And you don't have to do every single stitch. Um, 
I might, just because I might as well. I think I've got enough sewing thread. But uh, I'm going to do underneath each of those little stitches all the way across. I'm not stitching too tightly because I don't want it to be kind of pulled. Kind of like, I mean, I love sewing, so this is not a big deal for me, but I kind of like sewing little bits together because it feels kind of meditative. And making sure I'm getting the bottom. There we go. Pause. Yep, still on track. That's a nice little curve. You don't see anything showing through to the back, so that's nice. And I'm going to continue the curve of the chin. Yvonne says, when Jada, when Jada says so, I hear hot glue. <laughs> hot glue's fine too. <laughs> Hot glue works just fine on these as well, especially if they're designed to be ornaments. Uh, or fabric glue. Fabric glue's nice. It's not as uh, as stringy and messy as the hot glue is. When Jada says so, I hear bacon cheeseburger. <laughs> Pizza. I have... Who else hears hot glue when Jada says sew? I have popped through to the other side, and now I'm going to just sew all the way along that top edge back, just making sure that I've got him sort of stitched to the top of his chin. And then his little, his little scarf can kind of blow in the wind. Oh my gosh, Kathy and Ronald are in the house again. Hello, cousins. <laughs> they say, hello again, my friends. Sending a bit of Christmas cheer for Mr. <laughs> Stitch's new computer. Thank you so much. Enjoy your week. And I definitely, and I definitely enjoy you both. Oh, thanks. Thank you are you both so, so much. sweet. Your cousin really? spirit, Kathy. Thank you. Really do appreciate that. I am planning on getting a new, more powerful computer. That doesn't stall um, out so much <laughs> i'm aiming for this spring slash summer yes we're saving up that's for it that's the goal we're saving up for it really appreciate it thank you thank you so much you guys ron and kathy in the house i kind of like this oh my thank you pamela pamela in the etsy shop thank you so much there i like his little his little scarf i can kind of make it straight i can curl it a little bit If I can get it to go the other way. I like this. This is cute. Okay, so that's his little scarf. I'm just going to distress my stitches a little bit so he looks like it's a bit wider. Oh, I like that. That's cute. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to make a little tiny knot, weave my tail in an itty bitty little bit. I've got more sewing thread than I needed, so that's fine. There we go. And then it's bead time. I'm going to sew some beads to this guy for his little lumps of coal. I think that'll look really cute. And Marie then we'll add says, a little thread. Marie says you should get me a PS5 for my next birthday. Oh my gosh. And I agree. <laughs> Marie, I just, stop I, it. I just wanted to share that with everybody. <laughs> well, we know whose side Marie's on. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that's all I need of that. I'm going to trim. Do not get crochet. There we go. And I will put my little needle away. Okay, so here is the basic part of our snowman. I'm going to have a sip of my coffee. I'm going to grab my beads. Um, and then we're going to add a little hanger to the top of them. And that will be Everyone that. Everyone is loving your little snowman. Oh, so cute. We do have a more succinct tutorial video on YouTube for yes. this pattern. 
if yes. anyone would like to check that out uh, so, later. Let's see here. The original made with size four medium weight yarn measures approximately four inches tall. I'm sorry, four inches wide and, and seven inches tall. So he's quite a tall original, um, nine and a half centimeters wide or 18 centimeters tall. So the original is quite tall. And this little guy, by comparison, at his tallest is of four and a quarter inches or about 11 centimeters and just a little over two inches or about five and a half centimeters at his widest. So he's much smaller when you make him out of crochet thread. And I think he's adorable. Okay, guys, I'm gonna grab my black buttons and I'm gonna refresh my water. I'll be right back. Pamela asks if the pattern purchases are going through. Um, sometimes the software stops making the sound effects. Um, can you check if Pamela purchased something recently? Sure. Just grabbing my beads here. Yes! It We've didn't got... go through. Oh my gosh, Wendy, oh, Virginia, Aaron, and Pamela. I think I saw, I think I saw Aaron and um, so Pamela, thank, thank you so you much. To Pamela and Aaron? Thank yous. Actually, so far today, I'd like to thank Donna, Marie, Joyce, Wendy, Virginia, Aaron, Pamela, and Kathy Jones. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all so much for helping out at the shop. I really appreciate it. I've got, I've just reset it. Maybe it'll work now. Uh, but yes, please sing out. If you don't hear the noise, please sing out. I don't want to miss Sometimes anybody. Sometimes it glitches out. We have to restart everything. But um, So I've see. got some nice little black beads here. This is, I've kind of lost part of my labeling. But this is a, um, a nice little container with a snap lid uh, that has all these little black beads in it. These are about, oh my gosh. They're only a few millimeters wide. They're, this is my favorite bead size, and I think that these are just perfect for his scale. And they're so small that I think you could probably include them in your tuck-in for, um, for your cards, and it wouldn't be a problem. I don't think that these would... These are about as bumpy as the actual stitches. So we're going to use a couple of these as some eyes. I'm going to use some as a little mouth. Um, I'm pretty sure I got this at Walmart back in the day. Nothing special, make a great sound. So I've got a few of these lying around. I'm gonna have about two for the eyes, maybe five for his mouth, and then a couple uh, little buttons running down the front. And I'm going to sew it on using some white thread. Now, do I have any preloaded? Oh, I might, yeah, that might be enough for the eyes. All right, let's try that. Okay, so 
I'm going to decide where I want my eyes. I think <laughs> Do I make them a little further apart, a little closer together, closer to his, his nose maybe? Like he's got, aw, that might be cuter with them closer to his nose. He's got kind of a smaller little face. What do you guys think? That doesn't look so bad. I could do them on either side of his face, a little, little wider. Nah, I think they should be closer to his, closer to his nose. That way he kind of looks like he's looking in that direction. All right, I'm gonna, I've got my, my needle is double threaded, which means I've got one length of thread pulled through and I've got both ends together and I'm knotting them. So I've got sort of double the thickness of sewing thread. And I'm gonna sew them in like that, right after I have a sip of my eggnog coffee. Kit Kat says, these are a size eight bead. Oh, okay, great, thank you. Oh. Actually, this says six. I don't know if that's what that is. I have to admit, I've never really paid close attention to the size of a bead other than their millimeter measurement, like their actual measurement. This says six slash zero. So I don't know if that means something. Any of you jewelry makers in the house? But I can't imagine that six and eight are too different. <laughs> also, these are sold in Canada. So there could be a little difference there too. Um, for some reason, the, at the border, things like to change. I'm not sure why. I'm going to hold one eye in place while I anchor my sewing thread. So I'm just going to, I like to run my needle between the threads just to anchor it in place, pick up the bead, and I'm going to Sew that down, making sure I don't twist my thread. I might sew it twice before I go and do the other one. There we go. Okay, that's one. And we just go over here. I'll pick up second one yeah so I'm just making sure that I'm not I don't have like my my thread isn't sort of wanting to sort of separate and poof out on me so I'm gonna sew each bead down kind of on its own a couple times, and then I will go back and sort of make sure that they're, they both feel nice and solid. So that's, there, looks a little bit like a cartoon. I like it. So I'm just going to run my needle underneath those stitches back to my first eye and I'm going to stitch that down a couple more times and then that will be it for the eyes. And then I'm probably going to have to reload my thread. Yeah. There we go. There's his little eyes in. I'm going to bring that through to the back and make a little knot. A couple times just to make sure it's not going to I'm undone. And then I'm going to weave that tail in through some of my stitches and snip. All right. So eyes are on. Now I'm going to do, I think, let's see, three little pieces of coal for his mouth, four, five. Let's see how many I can fit in there. Hmm. Nico, thank you, Nico. 
Nico's a gifting machine. Thank you so much. And Sue has won it. Welcome to the family, Sue. Nico with the gifting memberships. So sweet. I think maybe I might get four in there. And then maybe three little buttons down his front. I think that might be what happens. Yeah. Four, four for his mouth and three for his front. I don't think I can fit too many more up there. So let's do that. I'm going to cut myself a length of thread. And let's sew on some little pieces of coal. Trickiest thing all day is threading a needle. Come on, there we go. Woohoo! I like your little snowman's mouth. It he kind of looks like he's up to something. Yeah, I feel like Catherine he's... says it makes him look cheeky. I agree. Yes, he's, he's a got like a little smirk. Cheeky little snowman. Mm. I agree. He's yeah. up to no good. He's probably planning on throwing snowballs at people walking by. <laughs> so I'm seeing some people saying they like three versus four. Three versus four. Hmm. I don't know. I think I like the four. I feel like the four gives it just enough now remember they're going to be kind of on their side so they're not going to look as wide um let's do the four and if i don't like it i'll take it out and do fewer so i'm going to start with the first one underneath his nose about here and because i'm sewing buttons in a line i'm going to do this a little bit differently so i'm going to string up button number one Jada's going full hot glue here, everybody. <laughs> hot gluing. So I'm going to do, just get him stitched down. Keep that little scarf out of the way. All right. Susan wants to know how he can throw snowballs without arms. He uses his <laughs> scarf. He's, He's magical. He's got that scarf and he just whips them at people. <laughs> Make sure he gets them in the back of the head. And then so you don't, don't suspect the guy was. without arms. And then he snaps back to his little snowman pose. Yeah, you, and you don't suspect the guy with no arms. He hits dogs, cats, anything that walks by. Squirrels. <laughs> He's a cheeky little bugger. He's cheeky. He's up to no good. Oh, now he looks like he's been caught. He's got that face like, uh oh, like, oops. I think they saw me. <laughs> so that's four. I wonder if that one's a little too far away. Two, three, four. And that's three. I feel like maybe I can put that one a little closer. What if I fold it back on itself? Hmm, no. Yeah, that's in a good spot. So Four or three beads, everybody. I'm going to say four. I think I like the four. I'm going to hide that. Three, four. 
Yeah, I'm going to go with four. Okay. So now I'm going to solidify the, sp the positioning of these beads. You know he's going to need a snowball now, right? A snowball? How? Where am I going to put that? <laughs> On his scarf. On his scarf? Oh. <laughs> a snowball that he flings at everybody. Let's just solidify the position. Of... So are you going with four? I'm going to go with so four. Everyone's voting in the chat. It looks like four is winning. I think four is a balanced smile. Since four he's is got, a balanced smile. He's got uh, the eyes at two. I think the smile should be at least two more beads than the number of we've got for the eyes. Are you planning on giving him little stick arms? Uh, well, are we going I, armless? I wasn't. The original doesn't have arms. The He's very... The original, varies. let me see here. The original does not. No. The original has a scarf, face, and the little buttons. poking through get that out of my way there we go okay hmm does he need a fifth piece no no, four is good. Don't overdo it. Don't overdo it, Jada. Okay. So I've got him. Mouth is stitched down. Oh, that's cute. I'm going to stitch out. Yes, four. Is four too few? Boy, I'm really overthinking this. Yes, four is four is enough. Four is enough, Jada. For heaven's sakes! <laughs> All right, I'm gonna secure this on the back, and then I will add his little buttons, and then we will add a little hanger. And this is gonna be one super cute. This is gonna be either a really nice little um, ornament to hang on the tree or a bookmark. He's a good size for a bookmark. Okay, so one smiling little guy. Little. You do not have to already be a, a member to win a membership. No, no, not um, at all. Another gifted membership <laughs> oh from Nico. Nico, thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> YouTube randomly chooses who wins. Cheers, Nico. Uh, it depends on your activity, I believe. Your activity on the site or the channel. Mm hmm. And Nancy has won it. Welcome to the family, Nancy. Yes, uh, the algorithm sort of does its own little thing. It it uh, it it um, awards them based on, I think, interaction with the channel. Interaction is like likes and comments and uh, watch hours and a bunch of other little things. So we don't know how exactly it does it, but we know that those are some of the things it considers. At least that's what they tell us. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. That's what they tell us. So now we're going to put on his little <laughs> buttons and I'm just going to do them across the, the, at the intersection between row one and row two, the very middle of the cinch circle and the other intersection between row one and row two at the bottom. So just right in the middle like that. I think that's kind of cute. And this way he looks like he's kind of looking up. So. So I'm going to sew this one right in the middle. Sew and or glue. <laughs> All right, and 
then I'm going to track my needle down to the middle where I'm going to put the next button. making sure that's sewn in nicely. And then I'm going to track my needle down to, so I'm just we're sort of weaving it through some of the little stitches here down to the bottom of row one of the middle and then button number three. <laughs> We need reindeer antlers. This is from Bluegrass, not me. <laughs> reindeer antlers as arms holding a snowball. And then we need innocent passerbyers. Getting pelted. <laughs> innocent, innocent people standing by I looking can, away from the snowman. I can definitely do, I can give him some arms. Let's. Let me dig into my embroidery floss. I've got some brown embroidery floss. All right. <clears throat> so let's weave this in a couple times. Make sure that it's hidden. There we go. Needle back in needle case. All right, so here's our little scarf blowing in the wind. He's got his buttons on. He's got his little face and his little hat on. I'm going to put his hanger on. Let me just put these little guys away so they don't get lost. Oh, I love beads. I love beads so much. And, oh, that's such a satisfying little snap. Okay, I'm going to hang him with some of this green. Why not? All right, just going to cut, eh. 30 centimeters, 12 inches worth. Doing that simple little hanger thing. So I'm gonna knot my two ends together. And then push that knot down to the end as far as it'll go. And nice and tight, all right. And in order to get him to hang so that his little head is sort of looking like his little hat's off to the side, I'm going to put the hanger right here in this little intersection between where his hat turns into the brim. So I'm going to treat that as his center, center top. There we go. All right, so now when he hangs, he will hang like upright. His little hat will be to the side. So there's our snowman with his hanger. Now, do I add little stick arms? Should I try that? Let's see if I can find my embroidery floss. Stick arms and an anvil. Stick arms and He's an holding anvil. holding an anvil. An anvil? Welcome, welcome, if you're just joining us. Everyone's loving the snowman. All right. Did Jada make a cute snowman? I I'd have to say yes. She <laughs> always makes cute stuff. I'm looking for brown embroidery floss. There we go. There's some brown embroidery floss. Um. Again, if you are into embroidery floss, this is just a gigantic pack. I, it's a it's a, a mixed pack. I got it Walmart again, I think, like a, quite a while ago now. But it's um it's it's for making. You can embroider with it. You can do anything. It's regular cotton floss. But um, I was I was so into making embroidery like like knotted friendship bracelets for 
20 years. I would make them more and more and more complicated and wider and wider and full of beads. So I always <laughs> have a tremendous amount of embroidery floss around, mostly because of my bracelet making obsession that I had. <laughs> Let's see. What's this little snowman thinking? Hmm. I don't know. Put in the chat what you think he's what what you think he's thinking. What's going through his head right now? <laughs> Looks like he's he's up to something. That's for sure. I think so. All right. Let's see. All right. I've got my brown embroidery floss. I'm going to anchor his arms near the top of his body. So right where my scarf ends, I'm going to come down two stitches along either side of his body and I'm going to anchor the arms there. So I'm going to make a little slip knot. I will weave the short tail in later. I'm going to join my yarn or my thread in this case with a slip stitch, two stitches down from the edge of the scarf. And let's make ourselves a little arm. Now we want the arm to be kind of stiff, so it can't be too long. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven. All right, I don't want it to be too floppy, so I'm gonna chain out seven. I'm gonna skip the first chain from the turning or the first chain from the hook. I'm going to slip stitch into the second chain and into the third chain. Yeah, fourth chain too. And I'm going to chain three. Again, skip the first chain slip stitch into each of the next two, bracing it against my finger so I can kind of see what I'm doing, plus get my hook through it. I think that's enough. Too many and it'll get to be too thick. So, and then I'm gonna slip stitch into each chain all the way back. and into the same place that I joined the yarn. So, how's that look? Before I fasten off, does that look like a little arm? Stubby little arms? Yeah, I think it's cute. Are they too high? Should they Why be am I lower? trying to stay warm with a scarf? We're trying. We're trying to decide what he's uh, what he's thinking. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? <laughs> Needs to be longer. What happens if my hat falls off? So the arms need to be a little longer. Gin and tonic, anyone? Yeah, I agree, Sylvia. <laughs> um, a little bit longer or a little lower down, maybe. I don't know. We'll see what everyone thinks. I kind of like the idea Barbara of Barbara says looks great. A little lower? And so if I just take my hook out lower. of there, oh, the other one would be... the arm? The other one would be over you here. You can just twist it down. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's fine. I kind of like I kind of like his arms being kind of like me like, like he's happy and like excited. Up up near up near his where his shoulders would kind of be. Like the other arm is going to be the I think the I think, uh, you know what I really like him with the arms. He's cute. Everybody's saying lower. Okay. Well, I'll try it lower then. I thought it looked okay once you twisted it down. No, lower let's try it lower. Is. If it doesn't look good lower, then I'll come down to couple of stitches down. Well, I don't want to come down too far because then it'll look it'll look silly like they're just sticking out of the side of his belly. <laughs> but that's hilarious. 
Totally cute, says Crochet with Diane. One, two, three, four. Tell you what, I'll come down four stitches instead of two. Let's try this. So same thing, I'm going to chain out seven. Looks like everyone's voting for a little lower and some looks great. Okay, so let's try this. I'm going to do the exact same arm again. So I'm going to chain out seven. <laughs> I think Anna wins. Anna wins with what the snowman is thinking. I can't. Hang on. What is it? Anna says... Of course, I'm going to have to censor that. The snowman is thinking, my carrot is perfectly normal size. It's just cold outside. <laughs> <laughs> Anna wins. Ah. <laughs> 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 Family friendly show here, everybody. <laughs> Family friendly. Yeah, hey, we're just talking about carrots. <laughs> Award goes to Anna. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That is good. I like it. Very funny. All right. So there it is, a little bit lower down. Let me just fix my little hand here. Okay. Definitely a win with the little arms. Very so, cute. Yeah, I think yeah, you guys are right. It, like it is it. better lower. Well done. Well done, everybody. See, the community knows. The All community right. knows. I'm going to snip that. And I will do the same thing out the other side. Let me just fix up my... Okay. Now I'm gonna knot these two ends together. I'm gonna sort with sort out my ends in a minute. Let me get the other one on. Okay, I will weave those little tails in later. Uh, maybe I'll, well, let me think here. Happy little snowman. All right. Um, hmm. Let's see. Where am I going to put these? Can I weave these in underneath here or that show? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a second to try and get these little tails to weave in. Uh, I'm gonna do it as neatly as I can uh, up through a few of the stitches along the back of the arm, which I think will also help give it a little bit of like stiffness. So I'm gonna do. Okay, and I may do this a couple times. So I'm just, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, it's so small, but I'm grabbing both tails and I am pulling them through the back facing loops of the little chain stitch that runs up the underside of the arm. So it's very tiny work, but because I'm doing, I'm weaving it back and forth and I'm trying to be kind of tight with it, it's going to give the arm a little bit of stiffness. Kim has a little tip. Jade, I like to use freight check fabric. 
fabric glue? Free check. Check. Free check. Uh, I like to use free check fabric glue and tiny little drop on the knot and ends of the ends of the strings. Cut them real short and then cut them up. Oh yes, yes. Um, that works too. I don't have fray check. I've never actually had any fray check. <laughs> um, that might be something to invest in. I just kind of go back and forth until, but I like that idea, especially if this, this is definitely the kind of project, a little bit of fray check, or I, I would use a little bit of Mod Podge just to kind of lock the little tiny, the little tiny ends in place, just because I'm doing some insanely small weaving here. Um, so I pulled it up the back of the arm. That's about as high as it's going to go. Um, and I'm going to trim what's left. Careful not to cut the crochet. And then, yes, Kim's got a great suggestion. If you've got a little bit of fray check or a little bit of fabric glue, or like I would say, even a little bit of Mod Podge, which I do have, I'll pull that out later. Um, just add a little boop, boop, boop drop there just to kind of keep the whole thing in place. And it'll also I'll help out a little bit of stiffness. So there's arm number one. It really does look like the little tree branch. I'm going to do number two out I the other it. side. Great suggestion, everybody. It looks to like a tree branch. Drop it down a few pegs. So here I go. I'm going to start arm number two. And just to reiterate, I'm doing it four stitches down from the edge of the scarf, not two like I originally did. So that's four down. One, two, three, four. That's a much better positioning. The wisdom of the group. Chaining seven. Skip the first chain from the hook, slip stitch into each of the next three. Trying not to split my thread. There we go. And now we do chain three. Skip the first chain, slip stitch into each of the next two, and back into the same place that's the bottom of the first little bit of slip stitching. There we go. And then slip stitch into each remaining chain. It takes me longer to knot and weave in the tails than it does to actually crochet the little arm. Slip stitch back into the same place that you joined your thread and fasten off. I'm going to pull that. We have another gifted membership from Nico. Thank the you. The gift fairy. The gift fairy. Or the membership gift ninja, <laughs> as we like to call her. <laughs> Thank the winner you, is Nico. Sue. <laughs> no, the winner is Pauline. Pauline. Welcome, Pauline. Thank you, Nico. Welcome, Pauline. Sue is already a member. <laughs> Everyone thinks the snowman is so cute. Fray block works well, says Sue. Also, oh, a little bit of Elmer is mixed with water. Yes, yes. Elmer's glue, Elmer's white glue. Gosh, that stuff's awesome. If you're a crafter, you should always have some Elmer's white glue lying around. <laughs> it's a classic. It's a classic. All right, so now I'm going to do that same thing where I just kind of weave both those little short tails up the back end of underneath the loops up, up the back side of the little arm because it does help give it a little bit of thick stiffness. And then later on, I will dig out my Mod Podge and just add a little glue. Good idea, Kim keep that from unraveling on me because I do want see how like it, it, it kind of gives the arm a bit of stiffness so I like that so the original pattern didn't include the arms but I will include my little arm notes in the description box of today's live crochet along and also of the original tutorial. Um, so if you are looking for that later on, you can obviously follow along with today's live crochet along or you can go back to the original tutorial and I'll make sure that the notes for how I made the arms are included in the description box. So if you want to go back and add those, 
then we'll have that information there for you. How many of you are going to make this little snowman in the next week? Put a yes or no in the chat. Oops. I think I've just about... I mean, how can you not? Look how cute he is. I, I'm really happy with Imagine the Imagine a little is. garland going across your... Uh your fireplace or something well obviously he's a bit quicker to make if you use the um, larger yarn and the, the larger bigger hook yarn. and of course he works out quite Ooh, large we're getting a lot of yeses but uh, i love maybes. this what a sweet little gift to tuck into a a card yep, or yep yep put on the front of a gift there'll be something. a lot of snowmans produced this week <laughs> a lot of happy little snowmans I have almost got everything through here. There we go. Okay. Just a reminder, Jada's making this as one of the card inserts. Yes. Right? What yeah. are they what what were you calling them? Tuck ins. The They're tuck ins. Tuck -ins. Christmas card or greeting card tuck in. Yeah. There yeah. We go. So now his uh his his carrot nose will get a little bit squished, but he doesn't mind. Uh, no, it won't. It's actually quite <laughs> flat. His little scarf. His little Maybe arms. his little scarf. Very, very cute. There we go. I love it. Okay, so now he's got a couple of little arms so he can whip snowballs at people. And he does look like he's celebrating. I kind of like that. Like, ta-da! Very happy. Final. So these were yesterday's little tuck-ins. Oh my gosh, what a fun little grouping. <laughs> He winds up being at his tallest a little over four inches or about 11 centimeters and he's about ooh, two and a quarter inches or five and a half centimeters at his widest so not bad considering that the original one stands about 18 centimeters or about um, seven inches so quite tall we made these little guys yesterday and um, this is the same thickness of uh, thread as the snowflake. So wow, he does look kind of cute with the snowflake. What a nice little little quartet of, uh, of tuck-ins. There, there's four cards taken care of. <laughs> All right, um, thank you guys so much for joining us today. They look like a little Christmas choir. It really is a little, singing a little Christmas, Christmas choir. Carols. I'm going to, uh, like I said, I'm going to, enjoy, I'm going to include the little notes on his arms in the description box for today's live and also for the original tutorial. So if you're looking for that later, uh, we'll have all that impertinent information linked in the description box down below. And um, are we going to do this tomorrow, Mr. and Stitches? Mm. Well, it's up to you. <laughs> you're the one with the... Uh... You're the one with the uh, wrist power. The wrist power. wrist power. Yes. So I think we're going to do this tomorrow. I will probably be taking Thursday off because we have to prepare the uh, the Friday video. Uh, but we will see you back here tomorrow at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern. And uh, we'll be up to something else. Something else that's crafty and festive. Um, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us today. Thank you for the super thanks. Thank you for the membership milestones. Thank you, Nico, for gifting memberships. And thank you to everybody who popped into our shop and picked up a pattern. We really appreciate the support. I hope you've all enjoyed making this uh, this little character along with us. Uh, like I said, the original tutorial is linked will be linked down below if it's not already, so that you can pop over there for the recap if you need it. And um, more information coming to the description box on how to make his arms for future reference. So we will see you guys tomorrow. Have a safe and cozy and crafty afternoon. Take care. And um, anything you want to add, Mr. Stitches? I think you covered it all. We'll see everyone tomorrow. All right. Great. Same time, same place. Same bad time, same bad channel. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Bye, everybody.